Hey, Owen, why did you break your fast today? Why did I break my fast? Uh, it's a good question. You know, um, I had been fasting for 68 hours and, or something like that. It might've been 62, 63, but almost to that three day mark. And that three day mark is like the peak of autophagy for most people is that three day mark. I believe I get there a lot sooner because I already have so low body fat. Like I have the body fat of an athlete and the pecs of, that's, what is it? A chiseled Greek god. Like a chiseled Greek Roman statuesque idolatrous god. Yes, I wish I had those kinds of pecs. But actually, actually I said there's one thing cancer did for me. Cancer gave me a better body. There's no doubt about that. I have a better body. I look better in clothes because I've, I've lost so much weight and I've lost it largely, you know, in a healthy way. You know, every cancer patient's gonna lose weight. I don't care who you are, you're gonna lose weight on cancer. You're either gonna lose it because the chemo is killing you or you're gonna lose it because you're fasting and you're, you're, you're literally getting rid of the excess body weight that's causing all your sugar, your blood sugar and whatnot to go and feed your cancer. Fasting is key and, and I try to fast. I do fast uh, every for three days every four weeks. This time, see, you knew because I was eating pistachios just a second ago uh, and I'm happy. I'm happy again. I get happier. I get happier when I break my fast. But look, you know, a fast is a mental game and it really is, but it's also like a preparation game. And I did not prepare myself for a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday fast. It's the first time I've ever fasted Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And I have a show on Monday and I do client work on Tuesday and Wednesday and I film on Tuesday and Wednesday. So what I found is, is that fasting for like extended days like this, it's no bueno when, when you have work. So normally I time my fast for the weekends, right? Where I can just kind of like hide away, disappear, don't have to do anything. And you can, you can sail through a fast that way. This time it got a little challenging. And so I was sitting down this morning and I was thinking about like, okay, I'm hungry, yes, but that's not the issue. It's not the hunger, it's the weakness. It's like I have very little energy to even get from here to the coffee maker, you know? And then you start thinking about the commitment you have to your clients, like who you wanna be on cancer. You know, who's the person I wanna be? Do I wanna be the person that shows up and is like, hey everybody, I made it to the call today. I do that a lot when I'm fasting, I'm like, do I really want, is my clients deserve that? No, so I canceled the call. I don't wanna be that guy either. And the reality is, is that I could break my fast and still not be a quitter and not be a loser and not hate myself. I can forgive myself and I can move forward. Now I do see something wrong with breaking every fast. I do see something wrong with that, but I don't break every fast. I'm actually a pretty good faster. And so I thought, okay, I wanna be that person that shows up for my clients I wanna be that person that listens to my body. And my body is saying like, you don't have the energy to do that. Like you're, you're not gonna have the energy to be there for your clients and film videos today. So I processed two things. I processed like, okay, I'm not gonna to get to 72 hours this time. And that shows up in my app. I use the zero fasting app. It shows up in my app and so it shows up as gray as did not hit your goal. It's okay, right? But I still had to go through that process of like, all right, I'm not gonna hit my goal this time. And then I had to go through the process of like forgiving myself and reminding myself of a couple truths that my cancer will go away at the rate at which I do the right things. I am not curing my cancer from one fast and certainly not from eight hours. It's not gonna cure my cancer. I was already in peak autophagy. Like I was already in that zone and it's like, yeah, I wouldn't get to the top of the mountain, but I was already at the at the the highest peak, you know. The hardest part was over. I reminded myself that grace strengthens us and to give myself grace, give myself a little bit of room. Hey, you try to fast. You try to fast during work days. You tried it. And I think for some people that sit at a desk and type, you could probably fast for three days and still work. In that, I have to perform and present on camera and I'm a real high energy person, and when I'm not, like it's obvious that something's going on, it became clear to me that I needed to have some fuel in my body. So I broke my fast. I broke my fast a couple hours early, and it was glorious. I wanna tell you that it was glorious. Now here's the thing, when you break a fast, you don't just like go hog wild. It's actually where you need to have the most discipline because now you're allowed to eat, but you have to kind of eat the right things. You eat in layers. 
So you start by putting grass in your body. You start by putting greens. You know, you create a base. You get vitamins and nutrients in there. And then you add some fat in there, avocados. I did some MCT oil. I enjoyed one egg. That's the hard part. But I enjoyed as much vegan butter as I could scoop out. I got vegan butter and I just like doused that pan. One egg, some avocado. Uh, what else did I have in there? Some greens I mixed in there. Oh, super good breakfast. And then I, I wrapped it all up with some pistachios. And here's the deal. I'm going to New York this week. I'm going to be in Dallas next week. And then I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat well. I'm going to eat vegan keto for two weeks-ish. And then I'm going to go for seven days. We're going to do a seven-day fast. And my goal is that that seven-day fast puts me into remission.